Oftentimes when working on faces, I feel like the basic act of shading and highlighting is although easy enough, not really very effective at getting life into a face. I'm not necessarily talking about basic realism here, but more vitality, a feeling of dynamism, and something that really looks like it could be an actual face in an actual environment. Whilst working on this bust of Negan from The Walking Dead, a gift for my partner Jenny, I started to realise all the little extra tricks that go into painting a better face. When we look at this photo of Negan, which is fairly similar to the bust, we see all sorts of interesting things modulating the skin tones, interacting with the colours, and producing a bunch of interesting effects that we can harness as painters to make better looking faces. So today, I want to focus on a couple of these, show you some of the ways I leveled up my faces and pass them on. But before we get into it, please do consider giving the video a like and subscribing to the channel. And if you really love the content that I'm making here and you want to support it, you can also check out my Patreon in the description with pledge tiers starting at just £1 a month. The first thing I want to look at is hairlines and how they transition. Most folk aren't lucky enough to have perfect thick hair that is immediately solid in their hairline. And when we look at Negan here, we see exactly that. But we can easily simulate this transitional effect by taking a really thin dark green, I mean really thin here, and pushing it into the hairline in a gentle, incremental glaze. Once we have a good chunk of this built up, we can see that we now have a nice, hazy, fuzzy look around the edge of the face that simulates that thinning effect that hair has at its edges. Okay, the second thing we need to look at is stubble. You won't paint it on every mini, but whether it's a side-shaved head or a chiseled chin, getting a good stubble effect is kind of vital to making faces more dynamic. Here's what I do. Firstly, we're glazing again, but this time with dark blue, really dark blue, almost black. And once again, it needs to be super thin. I'm directing my strokes toward the recesses of the areas I'm glazing so that it gathers there and creates strong shadows. What's actually happening here is that the blue tone in the glaze is cancelling some of the red tone in the skin, leaving something that reads as a kind of blue-grey. Of course, this can run away from you and start to look too blue, but don't be alarmed if it does. Just switch to a warmer tone, something reddish or purplish even, and you'll be able to neutralize the bluing effect should you end up in a situation where you need to go darker, but your stubble is looking too blue. You may also find you want to dress up your stubble with some little dashes of black, grey and or white to sort of add some salt and pepper to it. But at the end of the process, you should have something that looks really lively and really interesting. Now for our final trick of this video, we need to look at how certain areas of the face show red tones and how we can incorporate those. The nose and ears are the main areas where the skin is thin and as such we see this redness. The first thing I'm going to do here is actually mix my base skin tone with a little red and glaze that in to get some really subtle buildup in the areas that I want it. This is just a lead in step to kind of lay a foundation for our redness to build into. I can then switch to a pure red, again keeping it super thin, I mean dirty paint water thin, and patiently building it up. Particularly it's the tips of the ears and the ball of the nose that really like to redden up, so this is where I'll focus. You can also use your base skin tone here to settle these glazes down a bit if they feel too strong. Similarly, if you really want to lean into them, use a deep red and add dark shadows to the red areas to accent them further. And of course it's easy to think that all these techniques may work great when painting a large scale bust like this or even a display piece, but will they work on smaller miniatures? And if they will, will they take forever? But we'll take a look at some of my Infinity miniatures here. The two O12 Kappa models were both painted in about two hours each, far from display pieces, 
but spending a solid half hour of that on just their faces has paid dividends in elevating them overall. Hawkwood, the guy in white, well, I may have overall had a lot more time put in, but again, the extra detailing on the face with the stubble adds such a focal point to an otherwise quite monotone miniature. So with all of this considered and understanding that the techniques can apply at any scale and with any amount of investment, how did our Negan bust actually turn out? The addition of these simple glazes, which are easy to control and super fun to apply, really pushes a face from lifeless to beautiful. So impactful are these little modulations and additions that the highlights themselves are no longer carrying the overall face, and instead, a more complete picture is made. I hope you enjoyed this one, folks. Make sure you glaze them faces.